So sit down in a meditative position, relax your body, keep your spine erect, close your eyes, generally become receptive to receive the energy from the sound of shank that I'm blowing and then we will chant Om three times. ready to chant mantra om three times make your sankalpa i'm chanting om creating a protective energy field around me that keeps me protected from all external negative influences antibodies and viruses take a deep breath in Continue to be seated in the meditative position as I chant the invocation, peace invocations. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunatu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejas Vidamadi Damastu Mavidishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Gently open your eyes. So good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session. Uh, as indicated in the group, today we'll make some slight modifications and go back to the model that we were using in the past so we will first have a couple of feedbacks and then we will hand over the platform to Eleanor she will take us through a complete uh, whole body somatics practice I will be practicing it you can watch my practice and practice or you can directly take instructions from Eleanor and practice this will go on for about an hour and a quarter after that, we will take up the cases that people had posted yesterday and if any new cases there today of specific issues for which you want guidance from Eleanor, Eleanor will then guide that person, others can watch it. So today we will start with the feedback from Gayatri. I have been wanting Eleanor, I have been wanting you to meet Gayatri for a long time. Gayatri, you can identify yourself. <clears throat> if you want, I will try and Pin Gayatri for everybody. Uh, yeah. She is a counselor by profession, Eleanor, and has not only benefited herself but also uh, refers many of her cases for anisomatics, and then we combine the work with her on the body and she works on the mind. So over to you, Gayatri. Good morning. Uh, sorry, good, good morning, Eleanor, and everyone. Um, so when I started, um, I, I just started with uh, webinars. Uh, had started long back, uh, probably during the pandemic. So I could, ex I could really discover that I can feel different, even when there are worries and tensions, and it could not be really expressed in words, and I could function well. And it was uh, that time I started. I work with children who are in distress. So. I started 
a lot of uh, stillness practices before I, you know, even get into any conversation. Or, and when I started doing that is when I discovered it's, it's really good for children. Um, I work with children with um, anxiety, severe anxiety, like um, during the pandemic, it became extremely severe, like um, and washing, uh, bathing for four or five hours in the washroom. So, uh, sir, when I referred uh, young people to children, sorry, young people like uh, them with OCD to serve, I I could see the transformation. They just not recovered from their symptoms, but they were joyful. They started doing, uh, you know, one of them turned to um, creative interests, like um, he has a garden of himself. Uh, there were so many other things that was really not going well for him, but now he is also joyful. He's trying to wanting and looking forward to life. Uh, it started off with severe depression. I mean, he has, he's on 50 mg antidepressants to now almost on the road to recovery. I mean, so in, in I can say in about three months, so, um, and very uh, young children, as young as five years, uh, were taken to online yoga, and uh, that child had severe constipation, severe emotional. Uh, disturbances, so we're like, he would not be able to regulate his emotions, is that the right thing? So, an ability to look, and then, yes, um, this is what I'm feeling, I'm sad, and I can't do it, and he would go to the and that is a difference. Um, so, I see that I am, and because after that I've been exploring and understanding trauma and that trauma resides uh, not in our thinking mind but in the body and how important it is to uh, you know in fact work with your body if you want to have a wholeness and wellness back so I see that uh, this work is um, is something that is vital for recovery. Uh, Eleanor, you have to unmute. Atri, that is so wonderful to hear. It is so wonderful to hear because I know that many children suffer and it they can experience transformation like you were talking about. And then their whole lives are changed coming from that foundation. Thank you so much for thinking of it. <laughs> you know, for wanting to do it. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm good. Hmm. So we will now uh, play a feedback given by one of the children's parents referred by Gayatri in one of our earlier webinars. And we actually say that this particular feedback is a realized expression of the overall changes that anasomatics can bring about so let me share my screen and then i will okay uh. Let me just start playing the video and see if it works. Okay. And Ramesh, there is a sound, somewhat like water running, that okay. makes it a little hard to hear. I see. Let me change my microphone also. Let me just get this going and see whether it works. Okay. Anyway, Gatri, it touches my heart to hear about those children. And to realize what is possible. It's just very touching. But it's a renewed confidence for uh, me as a professional. 
it's a renewed confidence for me as a professional to be able oh. to know what to do. Uh, yes, yes. And to be able to work with these children, including everything, you know, the wholeness that you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear the words? Having me as um, yeah. So, uh, I met Ramesh sir about uh, seven months now, and Krishna has been practicing with sir. Sir, am I right? About six, yeah. seven months. Yeah. So uh, I think the immediate effect that I have seen with Krishna. So Krishna, when we met Sir Krishna, Krishna has flat feet and he would have acute pain in his thighs, in his uh, hip region, in his knees, as well as an ankle region. So that will that has affected his playing. It's affected his confidence. We lost the sound now, Ramesh. Okay. But it was pretty good before that. Yeah, one second. And his regular activities to have. Can you hear it now? And with yes. the lockdown, I think the added stress of having to sit at home him? also added on to his overall well being. Um, the immediate effect that I could see after starting the practices was one, the reduced pain. Um, the pain is reduced to quite an extent and that has had a spillover effect in various other aspects of his uh, functioning. One, the fear around the pain, the fear around using that particular part of the body. I, I see that has reduced to some extent and he's able to overcome that fear. He's able to use that particular parts of his body to a better extent. Um, so that has helped him to get regain his confidence to quite an extent. That's helped him to play better, so he eats better, so he sleeps better, so he functions better. So that has had a spillover effect beautifully in other aspects. Uh, the calming presence of Ramesh sir, the calming presence, just the presence of Eleanor, you know, during one or two sessions, Did we lose it again? Ramesh, we have lost. Did we lose it again or was that the end of it? Uh, did anybody say something? I said, was it that the end of it or did we lose it? Uh, you're losing it, is it? We don't hear anything right now. I see. It is wonderful to hear her when we could hear her. Is it audible now? No, we're not hearing anything. Can you hear? No. No. I think uh, now. No. No. I think there's something I need to figure out technologically so we'll get out of it and get going with the program. Maybe I'll share this with the participants in the group when we can. Okay. Uh, so I'm going over to you now. Take over the floor. Okay. You know what? Yeah. Yes. Okay, what Ramesh was saying was we might demonstrate first, but then when you are doing it, I still want to guide you. Yes. While you're doing it. Yes. Uh, otherwise, we can say, and now practice. But I would really like to guide you while you're practicing. Yes. But we're going to add in demonstrating first. And so I would. What I suggest is those who can can directly start listening to the instructions and practice. Those who have a doubt can watch and practice. Okay, but uh, we want to do it after the practice. 
there's going to be a demonstration. You could do it with the demonstration and then do it again. What's what are you saying here? Yeah. Whichever thing you feel is the uh, idea. Okay. So Ramesh is going to demonstrate. If you want to begin with him, and I would, what I'd really love is for us all to do these basic movements and then go into some others. And one of the things I was thinking I would love for us to also work with our hands after we do our central body kinds of things. Because I know that many of us have hands that have worked really hard and they are sometimes painful and don't work as well as they could. So I would really like to us to work with the full body and then move into the hands. What do you think? What do you think about that? Would that be useful? Yes. And, and some for the neck and the head as well. Okay, so let's start with the neck area. Um, so the first one we're going to do is, so Ramesh, put your hand behind your head and tilt your head back into your hand. Your hand is going to provide resistance and then slowly bring your head forward. And the hand is not going to push the head. It's only providing resistance. Tilt your head back and push into your hand and we are contracting the muscles at the back of your neck and then we're slowly decontracting them. So tilting back and push into your hand and slowly coming forward. Thank you for pinning yourself. So now you can do it. Ramesh is demonstrating it for you and you are basically contracting the muscles at the back of your neck, shortening them, and then letting them come forward, allowing your head to come forward and the muscles at the back of your neck relaxing. So you can do it a couple of more times. And slowly coming forward. And then relax. So we're resetting the resting level of the muscles. Now turn your head to the right. Put your hand behind your head again and tilt your head back into your hand with your face turned toward the right. So Ramesh, you can turn a little more. Not that much, but not quite that, about, about halfway there. Tilt back. So he's shortening the muscles at the back of his neck and then he's slowly allowing them to lengthen as he brings his head forward. So we're not gonna pull on those muscles. We're just gonna shorten them and then slowly decontract them, allowing your head to come forward and relax. Okay, you wanna do it a few more times, tilt back and slowly coming forward. Great, so how does that feel, Ramesh? For me, it always, every practice relaxes the area that you're working on. You yes. can feel some slight relaxation happening in the neck. Yeah, you can feel, you can palpate your neck muscles and feel them a little bouncier to the touch, the part you've worked with. So now turn your head the other way. Right? And tilt your head back in your hand. And then slowly coming forward. So you want to stay in your comfort zone. Okay. 
Hello. So I have lot of pain in my left elbow and forearm. Your left elbow. I'm not able to do this. I'm not able to do this. Yes, well, okay. Then use your other arm. <laughs> use your other arm if if that's bothering you. Yes, so one side I could do, but the other side I'm not able to do. You can use okay. the same hand. So use your other arm. You can bring your hand around so you can bring it back. And then we need to work with your arms and your elbows. That's letting you know that those areas need some somatic work. Great, so bring your head to the middle and tilt your head back and take both your shoulders up toward the back of your head. Coming up and then slowly let your shoulders come down, let your head come forward and let everything relax. Tilt your head back again, take your shoulders up so we're working both sides of the upper trapezius and slowly coming down. One more time at least, coming up, shoulders going up, up, Ramesh, not back, up towards your shoulders. There you go, up, great and slowly coming forward and your shoulders coming down and relax. And sometimes you can feel your shoulders can go farther down than before. Okay, so put your hand up to the side of your head, right, and tilt over into that hand. And then slowly allow your head to come back to the middle. Tilt to the side and you can also notice that the side, that side of your body is coming together also. Yeah, thank you. And slowly coming back up. And coming down, we're working with the side of your neck. We're working with muscles called scalenes. And they are very important because the nerves for your arms and your hands run between two of them. And if they're tight, it will create a, a pressure on your brachial plexus because that is what's called the thoracic outlet and it makes it smaller if those muscles are tight. Makes it, makes there be a possible pressure on the nerves. Let's go to the other side. So now you're gonna tilt your head over into that hand. And slowly coming back up. Great. Uh, palpate the sides of your neck and see how the muscles feel on the sides of your neck. How are they feeling on the side? They're feeling soft. Good. Now we need to work with the muscles at the front of your neck. So bring your 
put, get your hand ready to put it on your forehead or put your head in your, put your forehead in your hand. You're gonna tilt forward and push your head into your hand and then slowly take your head back up again. So again, you're not gonna push your head back up. Your head's gonna go up by itself. Your hand is just going along for the ride. So tilt forward and push into your hand and slowly coming back up. You may feel when you come forward, the, the muscles at the front of your neck shortening. You might feel them. Tilt your head forward and push. And slowly coming back up. Very good. Now, turn your head to the right. Put your hand on the side of your head. So, hold on, Mesh. Put your head, put your hand on the side of your head, kind of near your ears. It's gonna, okay, turn your head in that direction. Press your head into your hand. So tilt your head to the side and slowly coming back up. So it needs to be kind of coming toward the front. So, okay, let me have you put your hand on your other side. So you're turning to the side and now you're gonna press your hand into your head, your head into your hand on that side. So come over into that side and slowly coming back up. But you need to turn your head a little more to the other side, other, other side and now push into your head, great. And slowly coming back up. And you're working with the sternocleidomastoid muscle on that side. It comes down from the back of your head down to attach to your clavicle and your manubrium. Great, just a few times and we can see your sternocleidomastoid muscle contracting and slowly coming back up. Right. So you can bring your hand back down. Now turn your head to the other side. Yes, and tilt into that hand. Very good. If you wanna reach up with your other hand and feel the muscle coming from the back of your head down to your clavicle, you can. We can see it very nicely contracting from here and coming back up. Great. And now what do what are you doing there? How is it now? How's your neck? Soft. Soft, right? And balance. The tonicity of your muscles are balanced. But let's do one of them that we did yesterday because it's so important coming down from your neck to your shoulder blades. So let's do the one for the levator scapula. So turn your head to the right. Turn your head to the right. Tilt your head to the right. Take your right shoulder up towards your ear. Tilt your head back a little bit. Tilt back. Bring your head forward a little bit now. No, just coming forward. And then turn your head back to the middle. Let your shoulder come back down. Very good. Very good. Turn your head to the right. Tilt your head to the right. Take your right shoulder up towards your ear. Tilt your head back a little bit. Let your head come forward. Back to the center and your shoulder comes down. One more time, turn to the right. Tilt to the right, right shoulder up. Tilt your head back. Let your head come forward. Back to the center your shoulder comes down, great. 
Now turn your head to the other side, to the left. Tilt your head to the left now. Take your left shoulder up. Tilt your head back a little bit. Bring your head forward, back to the middle, and your shoulder goes down. This is the most complicated of all of them. Turn your head to the left. Tilt to the left. Take your left shoulder up. Tilt your head back. Bring your head forward. Back to the center. Shoulder goes down. Very good. Very good. Right. How is that? How is that now? So we maybe we also need to do the upper trapezius again that we did yesterday. And right. Okay, so turn your head to the right, tilt your head back, take your left shoulder up toward the back of your head, let your head come forward right where you are, your shoulder comes down. Tilt back, shoulder goes up. Head comes forward, shoulder goes down. Tilt Hello, give me a minute. I'll mute everybody and you'll unmute yourself. Did you? You have to unmute yourself, Pedro. How long have I been muted? Huh? I don't really know because there was some sound coming from somebody's oh. mic, so I can mute everybody. Okay, okay, good. All right. Turning to the side. Do you want to change sides now? Yeah. Okay. Tilt your head back. Take your shoulder up. Slowly let your head come forward. Your shoulder goes down. Repeat that again. Slowly coming forward and your shoulder goes down. Head coming forward, great. Tilt back, shoulder goes up, head comes forward, shoulder goes down. And relax. Very the good. slow coming down is important. The slow coming down is the most important part because that's when your brain is resetting the resting level of your muscle. So the slow coming down is being done by your motor cortex, the voluntary part of your motor system is the only part that can relax, actually relax the muscles. And uh, I think one more thing you must tell them is when they are painting, if there is any discomfort, they should stop before that. Yeah. Yes, please stay, stay out of anything that would cause you discomfort because that's not helpful. We're not trying, the main thing is we're not go trying to go as far as we can go. We're just trying to go a certain distance and then slowly coming out of it because the most important part is the coming out of it, which is backwards to everything we've all been taught. So Ramesh, we did some other muscles with the shoulders yesterday. Yeah. Lie down. So can you lie down and and if you want to do this sitting up, you can. But otherwise, he's going to lie down and do it. So you're going to lie down, bend your knees, roll both arms in. So the backs of your hands are next to your hips. Go in, Ramesh, and towards your body. And then slowly let your arm come back down and relax. Great. Roll your arm inward. Thank you. That's a good idea. Roll in, shoulders go up, slowly coming back down. Rolling in, shoulders go up, slowly come back down. Very good. And then wait 
and feel the sensations that your body is making based on you moving your arms. Okay, now put the palms of your hands on the floor, roll your arms over, and pick just your shoulders up toward the ceiling. Now we're using the pec minor to pick up, slowly going back down. It is a very important muscle for your nerves going to your arms and your hands. Pick your shoulders up again. And slowly coming back down. And again, you are using your motor cortex to do that. And it's the only part that can make a difference. Okay, this is the third repetition, slowly coming back down. And relax. Now let's do the first movement again, but after we go in, we're going to go out to palms up and press your shoulders into the floor or into back behind you. Okay, going all the way out again, press your shoulders into the floor and relax. So you have reset the resting level of your shoulder muscles in front and you can keep your shoulders in a good position more, more having done that. It doesn't help to pull your shoulders back because you'll stretch muscles in front and they'll recontract. So let's go into some, it would be wonderful to do many of these cat stretch exercises together here. So Ramesh, inhale and arch your back. Yeah, you could from the side would be good. Take your take your belly toward the ceiling and then slowly let your back come back down to the mat or the bed or wherever you are. Very good. Inhale, arch your back. Belly toward the ceiling. Exhale, slowly coming down. Inhale, arch your back. And slowly coming down. Two more times. Inhale, arch your back. And slowly coming down. Inhale, arch your back. And exhale, coming down. Wonderful. And we're going to relax here now and feel the sensations that you created with your movements. Okay, slowly bend your knees now. And bring your hands behind your head. Inhale and arch your back. Exhale, bring your back down to the floor and pick your head up as far as you can go easily, not very far, and then slowly coming back down. So you're contracting your abdominal muscles and then you're decontracting them. Arch your back, exhale, coming up again, shortening your abdominal muscle and slowly coming back down. Inhale and arch, exhale. So we're going to do it three more times. 
coming up and slowly coming down. Please go only as far up as you can go easily. Pause to feel the sensations you created with your movements. The shoulders are closer to the ground, the back is also more closer to the ground. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Do you know what you did that helped them be closer to the ground? Which, do you know which movement helped you? The forward bending and going back. Oh, great. Yeah, great. I slowly roll over onto your stomach. Anybody who doesn't want to lie down on their stomach, you can do this lying on your back. So if you're lying on your back, you're going to bend your arm and bring your Bend your right arm, bring the back of your left hand up on your cheek. Now Ramesh is going to bend his right arm, put his left cheek on the back of his right hand. And then inhale, pick your hand, your head, and your elbow up off the floor using your back muscles, and then slowly coming down. If you're lying on your back, kind of turn into the bed and press back into the bed. So you're bending your back, but you're doing it into the bed. Go only as high as you can go easily. And as you come back down, allow the back muscles to lengthen. So we're gonna do that three times and then slowly coming back down. So rest your upper body and pick your opposite leg up, keeping it straight for the ceiling. And go only as high as you can go easily and then slowly coming back down. Great, we do that two more times. and coming down. If you're lying on the bed, you're gonna kind of press your leg into the bed, the opposite leg from the side that you are pressing your shoulder into the bed. So let's use your upper body now and your opposite leg. Inhale, picking up. Pick your head up, hand and elbow, and slowly coming back down. And inhale, picking up. And slowly coming down. One more time, inhale, picking up. Exhale, coming down. And now pick your left shoulder up so you can turn your head to the left. Put your right arm down beside you. Right? Now you can put the whole thing together. 
Thank you. And that is you can lift your hand, your head, and your elbow, and your opposite leg. Don't bend your knee, though. Just straight leg. Coming back down and relax. Inhale, picking up. Exhale and relax. One more time, picking up. And slowly coming back down and relax. And slowly roll over on your back. And we'll pause for a few seconds to feel all the sensations you created doing those movements. So now you're lying on your back. Put your right hand behind your head. Bend your knees. Inhale and arch your back. Exhale, bring your elbow across your body towards your opposite knee. And you're gonna take your knee with your left hand. Slowly coming back down. Inhale and arch your back. Exhale, coming across. Slowly coming back down. Inhale and arch your back. Exhale, coming across. And coming down. Slowly change sides. Now put your left hand behind your head. Inhale and arch. Exhale, come across towards your right knee as you pick your right knee up. Great. Slowly come down. Inhale and arch. Exhale, coming across. Slowly coming back down. Inhale and arch. Exhale, elbow towards your opposite knee. Slowly coming back down. And now you can bring your arm down and pause to feel the sensations that you created with your movements. Now, slowly roll over onto your left side. Put your left arm up under your head like a pillow. Bend your knees out in front of you so that you're gonna put your right arm over your top of your head. And now we're gonna work with the muscles on the side of your body. Let's do the upper body first. Inhale, pick your head up using the side of your body and slowly come back down to your left arm. Pick up again, you're shortening your oblique muscles and slowly come back down and relax. One more time, picking up and slowly come back down and relax. Great. Now let you, your arm rest on your side. Now leaving your knees together, pick your foot up toward the ceiling, bring your hip up toward your armpit and slowly coming back down. Okay, inhale, picking up, and slowly coming back down. Picking up, this is a wonderful movement for a back pain that some people have, and coming down. 
So let's put that together with your upper body now. Bring your arm over the top of your head. Pick your head up using the side of your body. Pick your foot up, leaving your knees together, slowly coming back down. Inhale, coming up. Slowly coming back down. One more time. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, coming down. Now rest your arm on your side. And leaving your feet together, take your knee up towards the ceiling and slowly let it come back down. Take your knee up toward the ceiling and slowly coming back down. Take your knee up again and slowly coming back down. And relax and feel the sensations you created. And change back to the other side again. Great, leaving your feet together, take your knee up toward the ceiling. No, you don't have to do that now. Just up, externally ro rotating your hip here and slowly coming down. Okay, pick your knee up. And slowly coming down. What are you feeling there, Ramesh? Anything? It's seeing that I can feel the muscle. Yes, good. Yes, you can reach around and feel the muscle shortening. It's such a good thing to do. So is that three? Yeah. Three. Great. Okay. Pause and feel the sensations you created. Let them all go up to your brain, to the, op to the opposite side of your brain. Okay, slowly roll over onto your back. And bring your arms out to the side like a T. And so you're gonna roll your arm, right arm over so that it's palm toward the ceiling. Your right arm is palm toward the ceiling. Your left hand is going to be palm down and change sides. So you can feel that your shoulder on one side lifts up and the other shoulder on the other side goes down toward the floor. Now let your head roll so that you are looking towards your palm that's up. So you have to take your palm, head to the other side and mesh as we're going toward the palm up side. Great, change sides. Great, now let your knees drop away from your nose. So wherever your nose is going, your knees are gonna go the other way. Great, slow, and for all of you, your knees do not have to go as far as Ramesh's knees are. Just take them as far as you are comfortable. And you can inhale as your knees come up and exhale as they go down to the other side. And changing sides.
Great. So now pause to feel the feedback from your muscles and your body. So the feedback is coming from your muscles, from your joints, from your skin, from your tendons, from your ligaments, from your fascia and other pressures dealing with internal organs because of the change in the organization of your body. Lots of things going on. And so let's add another one in and then maybe we might take a little break, Ramesh, and see what comments people have. So take your, you want to do that now? You yeah, can do that. Okay. So if you're wanting to speak, please unmute yourself. Unmute and speak, yeah. Things you are noticing. Wishes, wishes that you would like. Susan, you wanted to speak? If anyone wants to speak, you can put your thumbs up, we'll call out so that you can then come by turns. Yeah, Rati. Everybody is too relaxed to speak, I think. You know, Rati, <laughs> you are so right. <laughs> you know, that's really true. <laughs> and you, and you. You're muted. Yet unmute and speak, Andy. So it was really very relaxing, very helpful. Um, sometimes we are painting very sweet pain. I mean, we want to go beyond. I mean, uh, um, but that pain is very sweet. It's not that it's very, you know, hard pain. Mm -hmm. So should we or should we stop over there? Well, you can go beyond a little bit, but I wouldn't go too far. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, because sometimes stretching yourself is also important. I don't know, but to what extent? <laughs> yeah. Not right now. Some other time. Stretch yourself some other time. Right. <laughs> right now, she, we're... Shilata, you can speak out instead of putting in the chat. Okay, what are some other things people are yeah. noticing? Shilata, so yeah, so I also wanted to ask, if there are some specific exercises to strengthen the, uh, you know, uh, stomach uh, mus uh, muscles so that your digestive, digestive system and everything becomes more stronger. Yes. So do we have, to, do we have yes. some exercises to... You know, in this case, surrender, we are not working on strengthening muscles. You can do the strengthening of muscles with the other activities that you do. In this case, we're trying to balance the muscle tone of the different muscles. But there are movements, just like we did, the movement where you bring your elbow towards your opposite knee is using stomach muscles. The side flexion is using obliques on both sides and there. There are various exercises that we will do that will use those muscles. And one of the things we're also working on is to make sure that tight muscles don't cause other muscles to be flaccid. So we don't want to do stretch weakness. We don't want your back muscles so tight that they make your stomach muscles weak. So we want a balance of muscle tone between the different sides of your body. Okay. 
Okay. And you, as, as we were doing the exercise, I noticed that one side was easier and the other side was not. Yes. But by the end of it, uh, all, I mean, both sides were not only relaxed and they were soothed. I didn't even know I had so much of uh, tension in my muscles. <laughs> Oh, it's that great to hear. Yes, you will notice that one side is tighter to start with because you are contracting one side more than the other in your everyday activities. So it's really good to balance them because that will just get more and more so if you, if you don't balance them. But part of it has to do with your activities of daily life. Part of it has to do with which side of your brain is more active. So, um, you know, if you're worrying a lot, you may, the left hemisphere is the worrier because it is the verbal side of your brain. So it can worry, it can say lots of things because it can talk. The right side will worry more in terms of emotions and things like that, but it's not as verbal. And also, um, your verbal side may give you instructions. Do this, do that, watch out for this, watch out for that. And it may be very busy. Uh, and it contracts the opposite side. So it's really good to balance out the two sides. And that's good. What else are people finding? I think Surinder had something more to share. OK. Surinder? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I've been, uh, you know, suffering from uh, rheumatoid arthritis for a long time. So all my joints and all that over a period of time, because the pain was so acute, I could not do any exercise at that time. So mm -hmm. now, of course, the uh, first couple of months I am doing bit, 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 karke. I'm mm -hmm. trying to improve on my uh, this thing, but still, uh, quite a few joints are very stiff, you know, like mm -hmm. elbow and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know shoulders, mm -hmm. shoulders and all that. They are stiff still, but uh, I can't take the whole hands up, you know, completely mm -hmm. and things like that. But I'm definitely uh, more aware that I have to, you know, work on these uh, on my body mm -hmm. uh, completely. So yeah, so I just want to. You know, kind of be reassuring that how this practice is really going to help me improve. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah. how do we, uh, I mean, practice daily at home? You know, mm -hmm. uh, because we can't remember everything uh, we have learned in these two days. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the things we can remember, but maybe not all. So, mm -hmm. how do we? Practice, okay. continue practicing at home. Mm -hmm. one of, yes, one of the things you can do is use the uh, recording from this meeting and practice to it. You know, listen to it, follow the instructions. That's one of the things you can do. And there are other recordings of the exercises. But you know, joints produce synovial fluid when you use them. So it would, I think it would be useful when we continue our exercises here, if we work some with your elbow joint, all of you, everybody can use it. And there's several moves to do with your elbows to free the muscles of your elbows. And I would like to get to our hands if we, if we can and if we want to. But what is some, I think some other people had things they wanted to say? Uh, I think she, uh, I should tell her that she can actually access Novato Institute's website and purchase recordings of the lessons for with the waging. And she can then play the recorded uh, audio and practice along with it. Yes. And since you have done some of the things, that would be very useful. And these are offered at a very, very a uh, reasonable price is just $30 for a set. Mm -hmm. For several hours yeah. of exercise. So yeah. just to say um, that as you do the exercises, things will get better and better. 
So then are you going to keep on getting more and more and more and more flexible? And it can have, it can go on for your entire life, getting yeah. more and more and more flexible. Yeah, uh, hi, Eleanor. It was Thank really, you so much. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Uh, Eleanor, yeah. just, uh, it was a very relaxing session. I just want you to ask one thing. I have umbilical hernia. So, which hmm. will, I mean, are there any actions which will really help to, uh, you know, cure it or not uh, getting affected more mm -hmm. on that side or mm -hmm. something like that? I think that balancing the muscle contraction levels of your torso will help. But the main thing is we don't want to um, make it worse. Yeah. So staying at comfortable movements and tonicity and all of that would be helpful to let things go back where they belong. Mm -hmm. What uh, can she practice uh, lithophagy lesson one, two, three, four? Sure. Very gently. Very gently. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Very gentle. I think Ramani has something yeah. he wants to say. Uh, yeah. yeah, Ramani wants to say. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. you had mentioned that if someone is not comfortable doing an exercise lying on the stomach, you could do it lying on the back. In fact, Absolutely. that was the question I wanted to ask because I have been feeling more pain when I do something lying on the stomach, uh, especially afterwards. So just wanted to know a little bit more about it. Yes, you can do it lying on your back. You can also do it sitting up. You can do the same thing sitting up. Mm -hmm. And the main thing is to be comfortable while you're doing it. But did you ask something else and I missed no, it? So, so basically, uh, I, I've been uh, you know, feeling more pain uh, when I do some exercises lying on the stomach. So I yeah. wanted to know why is it so. I have a lower back pain for a long time. And uh, the pain kind of uh, continues for some more time after the exercises, especially mm -hmm. if I lay on the stomach. So well, I think that, that probably forces you into more of a back, arched back. Mm -hmm. So definitely you may want to do them sitting up or lying on your back. Okay. And you're just going to do the same move, but you're lying on your back or you're sitting up. Because mm -hmm. definitely we don't want more pain as you are doing it. Yeah, That's not very helpful. So other comments here? Also, I wanted to know that quite a few people uh, in my environment, you know, friends and relatives, they are developing Parkinson. You know, uh, some you are uh, just the beginning stage Parkinson. So, oh, Parkinson's, uh, yeah. Okay. So this is going to be if they start doing it now. Some of them are in the beginning stage of Parkinson. So okay. they do this practice. Is, is, uh, is it going to help them? To, uh, yes, it stop will the help progress? them. It can help them. It is very helpful with people with Parkinson's. It can't change the condition because some of their brain cells from a part of the brain called the substantia nigra are dying and they cannot produce dopamine that is necessary for movement. And so they do need um, medication to help them with that, either regular medication or, or um, herbal medication, something to replace the dopamine that their brains are not producing. But doing these movements are very helpful in terms of keeping your flexibility. They are practically essential. And sometimes more than other times. So pass it on to your friends. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. And staying as happy as possible is very important. <laughs> keeping interests going and um, keeping your mood, keeping your mood positive, very important. 
Thank you. Just wanted to ask you, is it good for people who are undergoing depression? Yes, it can be very because good. It's very slow. And so people who are depressed, they find it very difficult to do anything which is slower than already them oh. doing it. Okay, but depressed people do not have relaxed muscles. They look like yeah. they do, but they have very contracted muscles. And so I, if, if my muscles were that contracted, I would be depressed also. So these movements help them reset their muscles so they are not as contracted. Okay. And, it, and so it's very helpful, yeah? Uh, also, I wanted to ask you, sir, like, suppose somebody has, uh, uh, you know, left hip pain and we are doing these exercises. So on the left side, we do we do more or do we still balance equally? Yes, balance equally. You might start with your, uh, with one side. Either start with the side that you can move better with, but also on the side where it's painting, do small movements until you gradually reset the muscles. Because it's caught, pain is there for a reason. Sometimes it is because contracted muscles are pressing on a nerve. Some, right. So. Right, thanks. Thank you. Anju, what did you wanna say? I was, my question was also very uh, similar as Rati has asked, Ki someone we are seeing the youth today into depression a lot of people around me i can see in depression and you know all mm -hmm. those stuff so whether we have any solution for them in this very similar no. it is very good to start these movements uh and to start slow to start with one maybe and i think, uh, I think Gayatri should answer that question she has been working with people with depression Okay, Gadri, let's hear what you have to say about it. Where is Gadri? Gadri? She's not around at all. But in the cases that we have worked with her, we have seen transformations after they're all teenagers, but then we have seen tremendous transformation. Oh, oh there she is. Yes, so what are you noticing with people who have depression? What I noticed was that they were able to talk about and which they weren't able to talk about earlier. They would talk a little bit and then they are not able to talk and then they just shut down and they don't have energy to do anything. They're not able to draw anything. They're not able to create anything in the moment. I mean, in my playroom, that's to uh, an ability to talk. Mm -hmm. So can they do some movements and can they do some of the somatic movements? Yes. Um, um, in fact, uh, some of them are working uh, consistently, regularly with Ramesh sir. And uh, when I have seen them come back to my playroom, then I can see that they're able to engage in more techniques like eye movement, desensitization, reprocessing after they have sufficiently stabilized, even to do a visualization exercise to create a safe place or to do safe container. They were not able to do it before. Mm -hmm. So when I what, that's what uh, I noticed that when I first have uh, young people, children do a lot of uh, uh, somatic practices and mm -hmm. they are ready for further work to look into their images, memories, um, and the wounds and the process them. So Gayatri, if I I can ask you and to this side, hi. Hi, hi, sir. So, so is this applicable to someone who is very young? I mean, I know someone who is into depression for last 10 years. He is now 30. And for last 10 years, in between for a few years, he was like not at all speaking anything, not even a single word to his parents. Now he has started. He, he, has, he is now coming back from the depression phase. 
but still there is lot to be done for him absolutely undoubtedly yes. in fact uh, the fact that uh, when we are depressed we are not having words because that's not where our pain resides so unless we talk to the areas where the pain resides and uh, let the energy flow the modulus so there is no other way i feel first we have to work with the body and somatic you guys alexas uh, uh, practices so uh, uh, customized for the person so it uses uses connects to the child or the person in the moment what i that's what i have seen so far so it it works and then then uh, you know can be the with a uh, also someone who can also therapeutically help uh, the person can definitely um, come out and sure. he is taking lot many helps from all the sides you know consultations everything the parents are highly you know indulged into that but still he is not uh, are there any asanas also which we can you know we are just coming, uh, because if we do uh, more talk therapy before we can do body work when mm-hmm. talking happens then we are not uh, we are just increasing the problem rather than um, mm-hmm. solving the problem first we need is to uh, not talk not the brain to take up the thinking uh, brain to uh, distract us from the actual problem Mm-hmm. Uh, and if we we can go in cycle it's in cycle then the problem gets maintained but if we work with the body first then mm-hmm. uh, we can we have the clarity and specificity and what we have we move into a space for problem solving then right very right and to answering to your this. question answering your question and you we never start with yoga practices for these people we invariably do pure somatics we get them to relax and reach a certain level and then we slowly introduce some asana practices mm. and it has worked wonders for at least three four cases that we have seen so far okay yeah rati i thought uh, a child of uh, 13 years with add uh, can be helped with this and she can't emotionally kind of connect with her parents basically yes so I mother was that. quite stressed during her pregnancy and uh, now the child is 13 years old they got the child assessed and uh, in the first assessment they didn't say anything about the child and uh, but uh, for past couple of years now they are beginning to think that yeah now they've declared a ADD Uh, attention deficit disorder and um, the child is uh, uh, you know now she's kind of and now at this stage she kind of lagging behind in her class earlier she was still able to cope up with the class but now so her mother is now beginning to worry because now the child has you know turned the girl child has turned 13 now you know so can this case be taken up and help This is a question to me, no, Ramesh sir. Can yeah, that that's to Ramesh sir. <laughs> Gayatri, are you a psychologist? Come well, sir. More than more than me, it is Alana. I mean, she is far more experienced than I am. But I'm just in the kindergarten of anesthetics. So no, no, no I'm no. asking because you are in India. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the See, timing match the what, word is very difficult what, i think what we to what, match the what, timing with no, her but what we do is she guides yeah, she lays the foundation I mean. yeah that's what i meant so you so can she, uh, she, you wrote, she gives us the road map in which direction yes. we should go then we build it on that yes so that yeah, i know. was wondering can she be helped add child yeah and she can emotionally connect so i feel they have not assessed I, I, I am just guessing that they have not assessed the child right. It cannot be just ADD, uh, you know, and the child having no emotional mm-hmm. connect. So yeah. it, it, I think it is more than just ADD, and they have not assessed her right. It's my opinion about that. But of course, you all will know better. So yeah. So that requires much more observation and assessment and thinking about it and so forth. I would suggest that we continue our somatic. movements 
now. And we can come back to this later. What do okay. you think? Yes. Yeah, uh, we will, I will be in touch with Rati and take up that and then we'll see how to address that question later. It would be wonderful to do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So let's work also, some... What? How about clinical depression? But, yeah, that's a whole other issue, clinical depression. I really don't know. Um, that's a much more organic frequently. And I don't know how far you could go somatically, but I bet you could make some difference there in people dealing with that. So let's, how about if you lie down on your back again, and let's do some work with your legs. And then I want to do some work with your elbows and maybe hands. So, but I, I'm just thinking some work with your legs might be really wonderful. Yes, so yes, Trilatha is saying all modalities uh, of interventions help. So please bend your right knee, take it out to the side. Take your knee out to your knee, keep your foot toward your leg and let your knee go out only as far as it can go easily and then slowly straighten your leg from where you are. Straighten your leg, Ramesh. Ramesh, straighten your leg. Thank you. So we want to decontract the muscles that you just contracted. Bend your knee toward the ceiling. And in this case, turn your head to the right. So we're kind of looking in the direction the bottom of your foot is aiming toward. No, don't take your knee out. Don't take it. You're taking your knee the other way across the other leg and slide down. We're doing cat stretch number seven. So slide your foot down as well as you can on a sticky mat, straighten your leg, Great. Take your knee out to the side and therefore your foot slides up. Okay, you can rest your foot on your other thigh if you want. Yeah, and your head's gonna turn to the left and slide your foot down your leg and relax. Okay, bend your knee toward the ceiling, tilt it over the other leg, turn your head to the right and slide your foot down your leg and relax. One more time, bring your knee out to the side. Rest your foot on your other thigh, turn your head to the left, slide your foot down and relax. And just relax. Now bring your left knee out to the side. Right, turn your head over to the left, slide your foot down your leg and relax. Bend your knee toward the ceiling, tilt it over the other leg, look over toward here to the left, slide your foot down and relax. Great, knee out to the side again, turn your head to the right and slowly coming back down and relax. So if you cannot put your foot on your other thigh, you can just rest it on the floor beside your other knee. Now keeping your feet together, take your knees up towards your body. Take your knees out. No, other way. Other way, we're gonna do bow legged first. Coming up, great, and sliding down. And it's hard to do that on a sticky mat. Okay, knees together, take your feet apart. Bring your knees together and your feet go apart like you were doing in the first place. Great, now coming down again. 
Bring your knees up and your, yeah, and your feet together then sliding down. Knees together, feet apart, and sliding down. Feet together, knees apart, and sliding down. And relax your legs. Now you're going to bring both knees over to the right and your head goes to the left. Right, and slide your legs to straight again. Bring your knees up to the other side. Right, and sliding down. And go back and forth for a few repetitions. And sliding down. Remember, just go as far as you can go easily. So it's three times to each side. If you want to inhale as you come up with your knees and exhale going down, you can. And then relax and feel the sensations you have created. Okay, so pause to feel the sensations. We're coming up, up to your spine and up through your spine, crossing over toward the other side of the brain. Information going up to both sides, but coming from the opposite side. Okay, so bend your knees and let's do some work with your elbows. Now you can, let's, let's do one arm at a time. So you can do your left arm, Ramesh. So bend your Bend your left arm, take the palm of your hand towards your shoulder. And then slowly straighten your leg, straighten your arm. Slowly, very slowly. And bring your hand up towards your shoulder. And very slowly coming down. We're working with your biceps muscle and slowly coming down. Okay, again, and, and maybe you might want to try both arms. See if you can do both arms coming up towards your shoulders and slowly coming back down. So you're contracting your bicep muscle and then you're decontracting it. Now, turn your hands so that your thumb is toward the ceiling. Turn your hand. So your thumb is facing toward the ceiling. Your thumb. Can you wiggle your thumb, Ramesh? Thumb. Can, you, can you repeat once again what you're saying? Okay. Turn your hand so that your thumb is toward the ceiling. Great. Now bring your thumb side of your hand up towards your shoulder. And then slowly coming back down. Now you don't have to make... Make a fist. Your hands can be relaxed. You're just taking your thumbs up and slowly coming back down to the floor. So we're using your um, brachioradialis muscle to come up and slowly coming back down. Now turn your hands over so the palm of your hand is on the floor. Turn up, yeah. Now 
Bring the back of your hand towards your shoulder. And slowly coming back down. Now we're using your brachialis muscle. We're resetting your brachialis muscle. So coming up again, so we want to do three repetitions. And slowly coming back down. Letting go. Now take the palm of your hand towards your shoulder again and bring your hands inward a little bit on to your coming in towards your uh, a little farther in, but, but the palms of your hand on your shoulder, but coming a little bit toward the middle of your chest, but not very far. Just coming inward a little bit. Palms of your hands on your shoulder. Put your palms of your hands on your shoulder. Now slowly, no, put the palms of your hands on, go inward a little bit. Keep, no, keep the palms of your hands, palms on your hand, your shoulders, but bring them in a little bit toward, what we wanna do is aim for, biceps muscle has two attachments. One of them is attaching farther inward and then slowly allow your arms to straighten. So bring your hands back down to the floor, your hands, there you go, slowly down. Come back up, bring your palms towards your shoulders but inward a little bit. You don't have to move your shoulders, just your palms in a little bit. Great, slowly straighten your arms. And one more time, bring your palms up toward, we're, we're working with the biceps muscle and its tendon and slowly coming back down. And relax your arm. Now bend your arms and take them up toward the ceiling, keeping them bent. Up, great, keep them bent there and slowly coming back down. And we're sort of um, using your shoulder, the muscles of your shoulder to pick your arm up and then slowly coming down. We're working with your biceps muscle as it comes into your shoulder joint. Okay, one more time coming up and slowly coming back down. How about straighten your arms now and put them down on the, on the floor beside your body and lift your whole with your thumbs toward the ceiling, thumbs toward the ceiling, pick your whole arm up toward the ceiling, great, and then slowly coming back down. So we're working with your anterior deltoid here and the other shoulder flexors, let's go up again, and slowly coming down. And maybe one more time, are you okay for one more time? And slowly coming down. Great, and just rest your arms and your shoulders. Now, turn your hands 
over. So the palms are, straighten your arms, put your hands up, palm toward the ceiling. We're gonna work with your tricep muscle. So straighten your arms, straighten your arms. Great. With your palms up toward the ceiling. Straighten your arms. Yoo-hoo, Ramesh, straighten your arms. Make them straight. Great. Back of your hands on the floor. Okay. Now push down into the floor and slowly let your arm bend at the elbow. You don't have to go all the way up. Just come up. Just come up to halfway. No, you don't have to go that far. Just bend your elbows. Take your hands up toward the ceiling. Leave your elbows on the floor. Great. Now take your hands down again. Press into the floor. And then slowly bring your hands up again. Great. Now coming back down. We're going to use all three um, parts of the tricep muscle and come back up again. Great, and slowly coming back down. Now take your thumbs up toward the ceiling, push your hands into the floor, and slowly bend your arms. Just up toward the ceiling. Great. And slowly coming back down. Okay, push into the floor with your hands and slowly coming back up. If you were sitting up, you could press into your own hand and do this. Come back down and push into the floor and slowly coming back up. And now take your hands down, palm, palms on the floor, push into the floor and slowly straighten and slowly bend your arm. Great. Let's go back down again, slowly push into the floor and slowly coming back up. Okay, push into the floor and slowly coming back up, right, and relax. And feel the sensations that you feel from the different parts of your arm. Yes, you can straighten your legs, relax. And we want to add one more move here. So bend your arms or the ceiling, push your elbow into the floor, elbows into the floor. Take your hands up toward the ceiling. Okay, push your elbows into the floor and slowly come back up toward the ceiling with your arms. So we are contracting the um, extensors of your shoulder. Okay, press into the floor and then pick your arms up off the floor a little bit. Great. Now pick your arms up toward the floor, off the floor, toward the ceiling. Great. And then slowly coming back down. Coming down. Keep, keep your arms bent. Bend your arms. We're, we're working with the back of your shoulders. So push your elbows into the floor. Now pick your arms, your elbows up off the floor. Great, come down, push your elbows into the floor. Right, and slowly coming back up. And then slowly straighten your arms. Let them rest on the floor and relax. So do we have time for one more exercise, Mesh? Yes, we can do that. Yeah. Okay, okay, so bend your knees and put your arms up toward the ceiling, straight up, 
Now, take the palms of your hands towards your knees. Turn your arms so the palms of your hands are towards your knees. Great. Now bring your hands together so your fingers overlap. Very good. Fingers overlapping. Great. Now bring your hand, your palms down towards your knees and then go over your head to the right and let your head turns to the right. Turn to the right. Turn your head to the right. Great. Now, not everybody is going to be able to do what Ramesh is doing here. So just go as far back as you can go easily. And now bring your palms toward your knees, go over your head to the left, and your head is going to turn to the left. Coming back up, and now let your knees go toward the opposite side. Your arms are going to go to the right, your head's going to turn right, your knees are going to the left going only as far over as you can go easily. Coming up, we're working with a big back muscle called the latissimus dorsi. Many people use that muscle a lot. Coming up, come straight up, great, and go to the other side. So let your arms go to the other side. Go to the right there, great. Now you are doing that extremely well, Ramesh. So for everybody, I'm sorry, go straight up. From You went to the right, now come up from the right rather than coming back to the center. Now come up from there. Great, don't roll over. You can roll over now, great. So we need to go kind of like straight back to the right, straight up toward the knees, Straight back to the left, we up toward the knees, and relax. Okay, so roll over on your side and sit up slowly. And this is just about our last 15 minutes. How was that, all of that? It was very good. How are you building? The hand movements were something very interesting, very new, good movements. Yeah, good. Good. So I ask all of you to see what your elbows feel like. <laughs> because we just probably produced a lot of synovial fluid in your elbow joints. Okay, we had one request yesterday. Uh, Sushila, ma'am, you are there. Sushila Aunty, you're there? Yeah. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, she has an issue. She's a senior citizen, so she'll explain her problem and let's see what we can do for her. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. The gentle uh, thing is, I have no strength at all in my legs from way. Ah. And I find I'm always moving around or sitting. And every person to stand up, even for a minute. Hmm. And both the, from the waist down to the hip, both the sides, they really, really hurt me. Uh -huh. And there are times, uh, even my feet and my toes hurt me. Uh -huh. And, uh, oh. yes. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah. But I a struggle, with a lot of struggle. I make a point to go for my walk in the mornings. I have sort of a cane now because I find it a lot easier and it gives me more support and uh, more confidence perhaps. Uh, my movements are really, really, really badly. I would imagine that you have many contracted muscles in your hips and legs. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that your the front of your thighs are very contracted and that makes it hard to stand up and hard to sit down. So if we, if you and I and Ramesh relax the muscles at the front of your thighs, it would make it easier. Plus, I bet your tensor fascia lata is tight. Various muscles on the side of your leg are probably tight. It would be really good to reset those somatically. 
to relax them somatically so that they, right. so they can work for you. Yeah. They move out it. <laughs> yeah. So Ramesh, do you have a sense of what you could do with her? Uh, I have I have some idea. And when I take an assessment, then I'll come back to you as to whether I should add something more to it or not. Okay, that would be great because it would be really nice for your legs to be more comfortable so you could work more, walk yeah. more. Because yes. yeah, because they need to you need to be able to walk with them. Yeah, as long as the movements are made easier, I shall be very, very happy in this. That's great. Yes. Thank you so great. much. I'm in touch with Ramesh. Uh, yes. I want to hear. I want to hear. All, all his instructions. Good. Thank you so much. Uh, You're so uh, can, can we start working with her on uh, the psoas, uh, quadriceps, uh, and the hamstrings to start with? Well, yes, I think of the, you're talking about right now? Mm. No, no, I, I, when I work with her, can I start that as a starting point? Yes, please start that as a starting yeah. point. Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Kevin had spoken to you in the morning before we started the session. So in response, you were telling her, that we have to relax a whole lot of muscles. Mm -hmm. So if you can give her some guidance, and she's already working with me, so I can work on those areas. Okay. Uh, ever once again, can you show the point in the spinal cord so that it will refresh Eleanor's memory, and then she will tell us which areas we need to relax. You're asking me, Ramesh? I don't know. This is uh, somebody else. Okay, okay, okay. Are you talking about Anju? No, no, Kevin, Kevin. It, it comes as Kevin. Her name is uh, Payal. Her name is written as Kevin, but her name is Payal. Yeah. There she's showing you the. Oh, okay. Image. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. I can, I can oh. spotlight her for you. Okay. I think that um, a very small version of. Cat stretch number three, she needs to be, eight. I think all the muscles are probably tight. I think muscles are tight in her buttock area, uh, that the muscles um, are back, the paravertebral muscles are probably pretty tight. She, I think she's got tightness in various areas and if you would um, help her contract them just a little bit and relax them, that she could probably be freer from some of those pains. Okay. But it's, it's, she probably needs it throughout her whole back. Okay. And also buttocks. Okay. And also my, the calves feel very tight. I can't stand uh, for long. I can't like, Okay. Within 50, yeah. So the you, calf muscles are very yes. tight. Yes. So she needs to both um, contract her calves for the soleus muscle and okay. also the gastrocnemius. If she can, if you can't, can you lie on your stomach? Yes, I can. I can. Okay. So she can be working with her calf muscles. Um, um, with lying on her stomach with her feet off the edge of the bed or yeah. the couch somewhere and uh, plantar flex her feet and slowly come out of it so she can reset the muscles of her calf. Yeah. We did one round of that before, so we'll repeat now. Yeah, do it again. Yeah. And then she can learn how to do it and repeat yeah. it on her own. All right. Because your calf muscles cannot contract all by themselves. They have to be contracted by your nervous system and you can reset that. You can get something else happening with your calf muscles than staying contracted. They can't stay contracted without a message to contract them. Also, 
when you are standing, Ramesh, when she is standing, is she, what kind of posture is she standing in? Can you stand now, too? Yeah. Yeah, yes. Sure. <clears throat> there is one side, the shoulder is slightly lower. Mm -hmm. But the knee seems to be all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I am seeing a little bit of a pelvic rotation going on. Okay. So, so you will want to offset that. And sometimes the psoas being tighter, like her right psoas might be tighter than her left. Okay. Pulling the left side of her pelvis forward a little bit. So you'll want to play around with it and make sure See. that... Alright, so we'll work on it here and see how it goes. Yeah, because my, most of the time the right side of the body feels a little tighter than as compared to the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think Natasha had actually requested yesterday and then she had put her hand out. Right? Mm -hmm. So what, where, where is she now? Where is she? Natasha? Here. I saw her name, but I don't yeah, see yeah. her. I'm, I'm spotlighting her now. Well, you spotlighted yourself there. Can you spotlight her? Natasha? One second. Yeah. Natasha? Natasha? I don't know. She's not around, looks like. We'll take up if anybody else has a point to discuss. I see her over on the next, she's on the next page. Yes. Natasha. So I have everybody on the same page. I can see her name here, Natasha. But uh, when I call out, she's not answering. So maybe she's not at the computer right now. Okay, we're saying ask, ask to unmute. Ah, correct, exactly, yeah. So I don't know why it's not allowing me to spotlight her. And she's not answering now. So if right. somebody else has an issue, we'll go ahead. When she comes back, we'll talk to her. I'm, I'm pinning her now. I pinned her, but she doesn't have I'm a there. I, I'm there. I yeah, forgot okay. to unmute. Oh, OK. <laughs> Can you switch on your video? Uh, OK. There yeah. she is. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so I have uh, um, uh, my neck is very stiff. Like I come, it doesn't turn more than this, and uh, my my left elbow is kind of you know bend a little, and uh, so my shoulders pain from your. So I just wanted to know if, uh, you know, I, I need your help. So if you yes. could. Yes, you do need his help. And your muscles are very contracted in the shoulders. Yeah. And, and the I, have a, I have a small lump also at the back. I don't know how to show it now. I mean, on mm. my neck. Mm -hmm. Actually, so, my, my left hand does not go beyond this up. And I can't touch my ear as well. So mm -hmm. it's quite painful. So, so yeah. all the muscles there of your arm need to be reset, more relaxed. Yes. So you can bend your arm and your shoulder can allow you to bring your hand up towards your face. See, part of what we did towards the end with our hands and that you can practice, but go within the limit. Don't do too much. Yeah. And, right. and see if it releases and tell us and then we will see what next you can do. All right, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that will uh, also uh, reflect so, on the neck as well and... Uh, the yeah. Elbow, see, some... part of what we did in the morning when we used the uh, hands to give a counter pressure and move the neck in different directions. Yes. That should help. Okay, so thank you so very also, much. Also, the neck, the neck things that R Ramesh was demonstrating will help 
because your upper trapezius muscle is very contracted and very developed. Looks like you've been using. Okay, so the lump at the back of your neck is probably because your shoulders are coming forward too much. Uh, I, I am a RA patient. I have both my knees as well my hips already replaced about 15 years ago. Rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. Uh -huh. so I, have, yeah. I have it for last 23 years. So these exercises could be very helpful for you to decrease the contraction pulling on the joints because when the muscles are contracted, they pull on their joints, increasing inflammation of the joints. And so Ramesh can show you how to keep your muscles less contracted so that you are not producing as much inflammation because of the contractions. But it's a, a lot to do, but he can show you how, and then you can keep it that way. Because even my neck is, you know, I mean, I cannot go more than 10 yeah. degrees or yeah. so. I, most of the exercises I was not able to do. So I thought I will, you know, request you for two minutes to understand my issues. Yes, That's, yeah. I see that, I see that. Yes, but you also you can do some work with visualization, um, visualizing the movements can be helpful. And also don't make your head go farther than it can go comfortably. In other words, don't push it because it stretches muscles and those muscles recontract. Yeah. yeah. Thank you I so much. We, we should start closing down. Okay. And uh, sit down in a minute. Keep your eyes closed. Can I say something? Yeah, okay. I just want to say that Elena has been so kind and so sweet. And just <laughs> looking at her face makes us so, so reassured. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> That's my question. That like how can she be so sweet? So sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hard, hard work. <laughs> so, so wonderful to see her and know her and get trained by her and guidance. We will remember. So, so, so very thank you. Thank you. For her thank you. And this thing and also Ramesh, you. Yeah. Thank you so support. much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. So sit with your eyes closed. Uh, relax your body. Be receptive to the vibration, to the sound of conch. <laughs> Get ready to chant Om three times. Take a deep breath in. Oh. Shanti Mandras, 
once again alano thank you very very much for being so supportive for sharing your wonderful knowledge with all the participants guiding them for a better health in the future and all the participants also thank you very much for being there and trying to take advantage of whatever we are able to offer the next program will be on 15th and 16th of october where elenor will integrate the somatic practices with the yogic practices and take us through how these two can be brought together into a, a holistic uni unified whole so that's what we will be It'll be very good for all those who are practicing yoga it will be very good for yoga teachers and it will be good for everybody's practice that is the next one and the one in november we are going to deal with somatic practices for dealing with anxiety so those are the three practice three webinars that we have lined up so the next one you can block your dates for 15th and 16th of october thank you very much thank you very much thank Bye. you thank you Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.